Hello, everybody. Hello. We all appreciate you coming out here today for the first ever climate strike in Howard County. Woo! So We're all here because we understand the urgent need for climate action from world leaders as well as local leaders. We understand that way too often climate change has become a back burner issue for later, even as we see the consequences right before our eyes. The world is heating up faster than we had imagined, is having deadly consequences. Storms are getting bigger, wetter, and more frequent. People are fighting over our dwindling resources and losing their homes to these disasters. And are they forced to become climate refugees? This is not theoretical. This is happening all over the world, in our backyard, from catastrophic flooding to extremely hot summers, and more. But in a time when all seems peril, we're not going to give up. Humanity is beginning to realize the urgency. From September 20th to the 27th this year, more than 7 million people took action in the biggest global climate strike in history. But September will just be the beginning. We are out here to send the message that Howard County cares about the climate crisis and that we are watching our leaders. And so we've come out here with the rest of the world to hold our leaders accountable. We are demanding a Green New Deal, indigenous sovereignty, environmental justice, protection and restoration of biodiversity and sustainable agriculture. We've been warned about shorter deadlines, getting shorter and shorter, but now it's time to respond to the climate emergency that we are in. What do we want? Climate justice! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Climate justice! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Climate action! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Climate action! When do we want it? Now! Woo. Okay. Hello everyone. Alright, I'm so glad to see all of you uh, standing up against the global climate crisis. My name is Ben Margolis. I'm a junior at Riverdale High School and a current member of the Sunrise Movement in Howard County. Ecosystems all around the world are collapsing every day. 95% of the world's population breathes polluted air and, and massive storms are wiping land off, off the map yearly. We as a people have turned a blind eye when some of the world's most biodiverse ecosystems are deteriorating exponentially around us. The Amazon rainforest burned for three weeks before any major media companies covered the story. Coral reefs are bleaching at a deadly rate. If we do not change our actions, coral reefs will be extinct by 2050, taking away about two thirds of the oxygen as well. The Earth's lungs are dying, taking us with them. Nations all throughout the world are creating an extremely excessive amount of waste and pollution through oil fracking, plastic pollution, and food consumption. We are stomping through biomes with our massive carbon footprint. More than half of the world's population it depends on all our oceans, yet we treat them like a garbage can. Overfishing, excessive amounts of all types of single-use plastic and styrofoam, emitting harmful toxins into the atmosphere, and leaving the ocean to absorb the heat must stop. These problems have yet to diminish because global leaders refuse to take the proper steps or even to acknowledge them. But we have a say in our future. If you're old enough, vote for eco-conscious leaders. Register to vote by texting CLIMATE to 38383. If you're not old enough, then you can still make a difference with how you consume eco-friendly products and reuse non-eco-friendly ones. Make yourself heard at your jobs, to family members, friends, get involved in clubs and organizations, and most importantly, strike. The time for reposting climate emergency videos on your story and nothing else has passed. The time for action is now. We need to take the steps that others will not. Thank you. When the water we drink is under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back! When the air we breathe is under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back! When the earth we need is under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back! Okay. Hello everybody, I'm Iris Ann. I'm a sophomore at River Hill High School, and I'm a Sunrise Movement Howard County Hub Leader. Y'all have heard the entire spiel about the urgency of this crisis, otherwise you wouldn't be here. So the old narrative around the climate crisis is that it's this standalone issue that lives in its own corner of the world. This kind of rhetoric is one of the reasons why we haven't taken the climate crisis seriously. We don't have to choose between fighting the climate crisis or every other socioeconomic injustice because the climate crisis is not a standalone issue. It is an issue that exacerbates every other injustice in this world. Poor people, people of color, women, indigenous tribes, LGBTQ+, disabled people, 
young people, and other marginalized communities are disproportionately on the front lines and hit first and worst by the climate crisis and have historically been left out of the climate conversation because of historic systematic injustices. So we cannot overlook the fact that those who have contributed the least have suffered the worst, which is why we must be a leader in this fight because we have the most resources. When we lead this fight, we cannot forget about the millions of people dying right now because of the climate crisis. We privileged folks think that it doesn't matter because we die anyway, but how can we live with ourselves if we just let millions of people die and watch biodiversity wither away when we all have the power to make a difference? There is no climate justice without social justice. If we do not deliberately fight oppression within our movement, then we will not win a Green New Deal on true environmental justice. This is why racial, social, and economic justice components are in the Green New Deal, because the climate crisis is an intersectional issue. Those with privilege must be able to use their privilege to fight for those who can't and pass the mic to those who've been affected the most. This fight is not just about changing the way we take care of the planet, but about changing the way we take care of each other. By bringing to the table marginalized communities, we will truly be able to create a just transition to a sustainable future. Thank you. Who's water? Our water! Who's air? Our air! Who's future? Our future! Who's lives? Our lives! Garrett Vossiger, director of the National Wildlife Federation's Tribal Partnership Program, says, if you're looking where climate is most impacting Native tribes, the simple answer is everywhere. Hello, my name is Kayla Moore. I'm a senior at Centennial High School, and I'm a member of the Lumbee Tribe of North Carolina. Indigenous people have been on the front lines fighting climate change since the beginning, before the colonists and before the climate crisis as we know it today even began. Natives all over the world have been saying that we need action, and it wasn't until those with privilege said the same thing, only louder, that people start to believe us. With what little voice we have, we try to speak up, but to no avail. We need those who are more fortunate, those with a louder voice, to do it for us. Up in Alaska, the native tribes' villages are being eroded into the ocean. They're facing harsher winters because there's no longer any polar ice to protect them from the wind and the rain and the snow. Their caribou and their fish are coming back with pollutants and it's killing off all the tribal members with cancer. And if you think this isn't a problem because we're not in Alaska, you're wrong. It's happening in Hawaii too, and it's happening in the Amazon where tribal leaders are being killed because they stand in the way of industry. And you should care because eventually it's going to start happening to us down here. And by the time everybody starts to care, it's going to be too late. In my culture, the earth is alive with spirit and with name. Mother Earth and all her inhabitants have provided us with the food we eat, the water we drink, and the land that we live on. She is dying, and this will have consequences on us too. So it's now our time to give back to her and fight for the protection of a dying Earth, which will lead to the death of our own people, starting with the natives all over the world. Support the indigenous people's battle by joining us in our strikes and our movements and our protests and see her as we see her, alive and with spirit and not some rock that we live on in space, and maybe something can finally get done. It's not too late for us, but we need to start listening to the people who were here before us, the people who know the earth the best. Thank you. Ain't no power like the power of the people, cause the power of the people don't stop. Say what? Ain't no power like the power of the people, cause the power of the people don't stop. Ain't no power like the power of the people, cause the power of the people don't stop. Ain't no power like the power of the people, cause the power of the people don't stop. Hello, my name is Hannah Alton Tully, and I'm a senior at Centennial High School and a member of the YSM and Sunrise Movement Howard County. While I'm a newer community member to Howard County, I've grown to love it as my home and I strive to protect it. Today, we're gathered here in historic Ellicott City. We stand in a spot that in fact is incredibly vulnerable to climate change. Need not we forget last year's one in 1,000 year storm that flooded this city, though we couldn't if we tried. That flood, which engulfed our town, destroyed roads, homes, businesses, and vehicles. Many people lost their livelihood and one person lost their life. As if matters weren't bad enough, we somehow experienced another devastating one in 1,000 year flood just two years prior. I wish I could stand here and tell you that things were going to get better for us, but I simply can't ignore this looming reality. 
While our city has always been known for occasional flooding, the changes predicted in our climate only serve to worsen these matters. Historically, Ellicott City has seen occasional floods as a result of the Patapsco River rising. But unlike those floods, 2016 and 2018's devastation was caused because localized rain overbrimmed the town's streets. That one in 1,000 year storm we mentioned, it really should be just a one in 1,000 year occurrence. But as our climate continues to change, the propensity for heavy localized rainstorms and flash floods is set to increase exponentially. And it's not just these floods with potential to reoccur. As tropical rainstorms become more common, floods caused by a rising Vitapsco will grow more likely. Following these events, our town took action to mitigate the damage. But what they failed to do is take action to prevent the climate crisis that is causing it. Climate change is no longer a what if. It is happening and it is happening fast. And if we don't cause a drastic shift soon, the climate and flooding of our city will be catastrophic. We are now beyond the point of asking for change. We are now beyond the point of begging and pleading our politicians to implement climate solutions. Now, we are at a point where we must demand immediate action. If we have any type of hope for a future, we must demand for change and hold politicians accountable for their actions. We must demand a Green New Deal and we demand corporate responsibility, and we refuse to accept and re-elect those who do any less. Let this serve as a warning that we can and will no longer allow those not fighting for the planet, those not fighting for our future to represent us. The time has come when change is inevitable. If a politician cannot accept this or meet our demands to save our planet, then we will do everything in our power to remove them from office. Thank you. They can't stop the revolution. We are the climate solution. Hey, I'm David. I'm a senior here at Centennial High School. I'm with the YSM. I'm glad to be out here today. We're fighting for the most important cause of our generation. On September 26, 2019, the Columbia Association passed. They passed a bill. They voted unanimously on it. This bill, they declared a climate emergency. I'm holding it right now. It's only three pages long, but in it, they, they commit to pledge to work on climate mitigation action. They're already doing this. They urge Howard County to launch ambitious climate emergency mobilization efforts and to declare a climate emergency themselves. And that's where we are today. We are all standing before the George Howard building which is behind me right now. We are standing in the historic town of Old Ellicott City, which has been struck by two catastrophic floods just two years apart in 2016 and 2018. According to historical data, there should have been a 0.1% chance of such a flood, and yet we had it two years apart. A county official said that they had never seen such devastation. It cost us millions of dollars in repairs and tens of millions of dollars in lost revenue. Throughout the entire 19th century, we had four major floods in Ellicott City. Uh, in the 20th century, we had nine of them. And in the 21st century, it's only been 20 years, a fifth of a century, and we've already had four. The entire amount we had in the whole 19th century. In a year between these two historic floods, the summer and the fall of 2017, the costliest hurricane season on record, totaling over $290 billion in damage. Since reliable records began in 1851, just one decade after the Civil War, there have been only two times when more than one hurricane reached landfall at Category 5. These two years were 2007 and 2017. Historians now call these events the 2016 and 2018 Maryland floods and the 2017 Atlantic hurricane season. But personally, I have another name for them. 
I call them climate change. So here we are. You all know what must be done. These are trivial matters. They will tell you that we can't afford to save our planet. Funny that they talk about what we can and can't afford. Because you know what I don't think we can afford? I don't think that we can afford to spend more money on the military than the next seven countries combined. I don't think that we can afford coups in Latin America for lithium. I don't think that we can afford wars in the Middle East for oil. And I don't think that we can afford a refugee crisis that would result from a climate catastrophe. But most importantly of all, I don't think that we can afford any longer to not be angry. Our community has been heavily impacted, but now it's time to make a stand. We have consistently talked, the Howard County government has consistently talked, but now we need to act. First, Howard County needs to declare a climate emergency. But second of all, I have a suggestion for Howard County Executive Calvin Ball. For far too long, we have sold out our county to real estate developers who mess up our environment in order to greedily squeeze as much money as they can. But despite this, Calvin Ball has consistently voted pro-developer. So, I have a question. Did Calvin Ball just forget the lessons of the Ellicott City floods so fast? Or is he in the pockets of the developers? Well, I think that if you Google search Calvin Ball campaign funding, I'm sure the results will be unsurprising to you. So many problems that we have here in Howard County, including the redistricting, has been caused by the developers. They have not been held responsible at all for the crisis that they have caused. Calvin Ball has consistently voted to change rural zones to residential zones. He's voted to pack as many houses as possible into small amounts of space. And these packing tactics they have for my school at Centennial, we are now at 120% capacity due to the packing that they have done. In 2013, Calvin Ball even voted for a bill that included digging up a grave site, including pets and military veterans in order to build an apartment building. So I have a message for Mr. Calvin Ball. We are not going to sell out our county to developers. And so, for everyone here who has not forgotten the Ellicott City floods, everyone here who's not in the pockets of the developers, we need to transform the structure of our society from the ground up. In that deadly 2016 flood, the famous Ellicott City clock was swept away in the storm, along with our hopes that we could wait. The time is up. This begins here. This begins at George Howard. This begins in Ellicott City. This begins with you. Give him hell. Thank you. Climate justice is what we need. Billionaires and corporate greed. Climate justice is what we need. Billionaires and corporate greed. Climate justice is what we need. Billionaires and corporate greed. Good afternoon. My name is Ali Ibrahim, senior at Centennial High School and president of the YSM. I will be brief because my peers have said more than enough about what can be done. I'm here to respond to the opposition. To those who ask why we strike, the response is simple. We're faced with two options, extinction or action. To those who ask what proof we have of climate change, ask 97% of scientists, the thousands of animals extinct and the millions dead. To those who ask, why teens must strike, it's because the adults haven't stood up. Believe me, 
I wish I didn't have to be up here. None of us should be up here. But thanks to the inaction of adults, we do not have a choice. They know that they will die of old age, but we will die of climate change. Brothers and sisters, our future must be returned to our hands, from the hands of the greedy. All of us have a right to life, which has been robbed from our generation. This generation will ensure the survival of this green earth by any means necessary. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, I'm Ian. I'm a senior at Centennial High School uh, and another member of the YSM. So, to anyone who may be a little unfamiliar with why we're here, we're absolutely not here to raise awareness about the climate crisis. Because the billionaires and the politicians that they bought are very aware of what's happening. Our parents tried raising awareness, and that didn't really work. What happened instead is that the wealthy funded think tanks to tell us that it was our fault. That, oh, you're not recycling enough. Or you go buy an electric car for twice as much as a normal one. Or stop using plastic straws, you guys. Oh, you have asthma? Better not use an inhaler. While they spilled oil into our water and they burned smoke into our air, they told us it was our fault. And we are here to raise awareness that that's a lie. We're here to say that climate change isn't some grand folly of mankind. It's a result of men, of specific individuals who are responsible for this. We are here today to say that fossil fuel executives are criminals. They are not driving while black criminals. They are not finding shelter in an abandoned house criminals. They are not feeding their families however they can criminals. They are crimes against humanity criminals. They are knowing and willful perpetrators of the most devastating crime in human history. So we're here to demand action because raising awareness did nothing. We are here today to say that this is not our fault, but we will be the ones to fix it. The criminals in the boardrooms and the criminals on Capitol Hill can either get with the program or they can get out of the way. The rich were not scared of climate change, so we need to make them scared of us. Thank you. The people united will never be divided. 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 So, I'm Peter. I'm also a senior centennial and another member of the YSM. And most of the people who've gone before me have already established the nature of the threat, and just how bad it is. But here's the thing. As Adam pointed out, using recyclable straws, driving in electric cars, these kinds of things, the small incremental changes that you're told will make the problem go away. They won't. Because 100 companies, just 100, are responsible for fully 71% of all greenhouse gas emissions. And those won't go away no matter what you do unless you confront them. Confront the politicians that let them do that. And, and these same companies, they've known before we did. ExxonMobil knew in 1965. And do you know what they did? They told us, no, it's not a threat. So they can make money. And they should be held criminally accountable for that. And furthermore, a system that we have that prioritizes their money over the literal future of the human race is completely unsustainable. Yeah. We're not going to fix this through any kind of small incremental change. We need large structural change to hold them criminally accountable, to force a Green New Deal. And because we believe that climate change is happening, we can see it clearer than ever before. And these corporations, even now, are actively attempting to thwart anything 
that would dare to cut into their profits. Right now, they're paying billions of dollars for anti-Green New Deal advertisements. They're scared of us. They know what we can do. So it's time to show them. Thank you. Exxon Mobil, BP, Shell, fossil fuels go to hell. Exxon Mobil, BP, Shell, fossil fuels go to hell. Exxon Mobil, BP, Shell, fossil fuels go to hell. Exxon Mobil, BP, Shell, fossil fuels go to hell. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sam Seliger. I'm a senior at Howard High School and I'm the co-coordinator of Extinction Rebellion Youth Baltimore. I am not here to give you guys hope. I do not want to lie or tell you that we can still save the planet because we can't. Even if, and this is a big if, the Paris Climate Accord's goal of less than two degrees of warming is met, two degrees by the end of the century, 150 million people would still be threatened by sea level rise by 2050. That's three decades from today. And right now, it looks like that's exactly what's gonna happen. Because if emissions goals are met, and things are gonna get even worse. Even becoming carbon neutral by 2050, like many states and countries have, have promised to do, is too late. To keep global temperatures from rising, by less than two degrees, we would need to use technology that does not even exist to pull carbon dioxide from the air. We are heading for the worst case scenario. Scientists describe it as beyond catastrophic. And people are going to die. And we know who they're going to be. They're going to be the world's poorest people in the world's poorest countries. The CEOs who are responsible for this crisis in the first place, they're gonna be just fine. Even us, people and people like us, in privileged countries with wealth, we're gonna be fine, especially at first. The global climate catastrophe is going to kill Earth's most vulnerable. Our only option is to take drastic action immediately. And that's not going to be easy. For the last half century, Legislative democracy has failed to address the climate crisis. Even a plan like the Green New Deal, ambitious as it is, would only be part of the solution if it got passed. We need immediate action from every single government. We need fundamental changes to production, to transportation, to consumption at every single level. And we cannot do that ourselves. We have to do whatever it takes. If we have to take to the streets and shut down cities, that's what we have to do. If we have to lock legislators out of their offices, that's what we're going to do. If we have to block access to incinerators and fossil fuel power plants across the world, that's what we have to do. And that's what we're going to do. We have to do whatever we can to make our governments act. This catastrophe should make you angry. So use your rage. Thank you. We're all looking for light at the end of the tunnel, but I think we can be that light instead. They call us Generation Z, but for the sake of our future, we need to make sure Z isn't the end. We are the last hope for us to win this climate fight, but we, we will not be the end of the story. Imagine if all of us here worked to hold our politicians accountable by relentlessly fighting for a Green New Deal that fundamentally changes our society for the better. By voting, making our voices heard, getting involved, and staying in the fight. All right, y'all. Let's make that vision a reality. Climate. Justice. Climate. Justice. Climate. Justice now. Climate. Action. Climate. Action. Climate. Action now. Climate. Justice. Climate. Thank you.
You are not mature enough to tell it like it is. Even that burden you leave to us children. You say you love your children above all else. And yet you are stealing their future in front of their very eyes. You only talk about moving forward with the same bad ideas that got us into this mess. Even when the only sensible thing to do is pull the emergency brake. Many people say that doesn't matter what we do. But I've learned that you are never too small to make a difference. And if a few children can get headlines all over the world just by not going to school, then imagine what we could all do together if we really wanted to. But to do that, we have to speak clearly, no matter how uncomfortable that may be. We cannot solve a crisis without treating it as a crisis. And if solutions within this system are so impossible to find, then maybe we should change the system itself. Our civilization is being sacrificed for the opportunity of a very small number of people to continue making enormous amounts of money. The year 2078, I will celebrate my 75th birthday. If I have children, maybe they will spend that day with me. Maybe they will ask me about you. Maybe they will ask why you didn't do anything while there still was time to act. We have not come here to beg you to care. You have ignored us in the past and you will ignore us again. You have run out of excuses and we are running out of time. We have come here to let you know that change is coming, whether you like it or not.